The Palace of Illusions by Chitra Banerjee Divakaruni is a book published in 2008. But this book is quite popular among the readers even today. There are a lot of books written on Ramayana and Mahabharata over these years from different perspectives and from the viewpoint of different characters in these epics. But this particular book, The Palace of Illusions, never fails to catch the attention of the reader. Readers are very interested to read and discuss about this book whenever they get a chance. Isn't it surprising? After all, this book is about the story of Mahabharat. Mahabharat, the story that we have heard over and over in all these years. Then what is that makes this book different? Recently, I shared my thoughts about this book on my Instagram feed and a lot of people came forward to start an interesting discussion in the comment section. They shared their take on the book. Uh, they shared why they liked the book and why they did not like the book. Yes, this book has haters as well. Even I have mixed feelings about this book. In my post, I have shared uh, some positive things about the book and some points which I did not like in the book. But it was quite surprising for me to see that people who did not read this book, they commented saying, uh, now I have to definitely read this book after reading your review. Now that is quite surprising, right? So in this video, we will be discussing about the popularity of this book. Like why this book is so popular among the readers and why this book will remain popular in the coming years as well, even though uh, many, many people are not a great fan of this book. The Palace of Illusions is the story of Mahabharat written from Draupadi's perspective. It begins with the birth of Draupadi and ends at her death. Now Draupadi is one of the strongest female characters in the Hindu mythology. Uh, her character is so popular that even people who do not belong to Hindu religion have a basic idea about who she is. Now, when a story is written from such a strong character's perspective, people will definitely want to give it a shot. And probably 12 years back, in 2008, this was a fresh idea of writing uh, the story of Mahabharat from a female character's perspective. That too, the strongest female character's perspective. So this can be one reason for the popularity of this book. We cannot skip this part, the writing style. This book is so beautifully written that you will fall in love with words. The vocabulary used in this book is so good and it will help you to improve your language skills, your writing skills, storytelling skills and your overall vocabulary. I believe that this is one of the biggest reasons for the success of this book because when it comes to any book, more than the story, the reader is hooked by how the story is presented to him or her. How the story is told to the reader. Because storytelling is a skill. You cannot just tell a story. You have to tell a story that sounds convincing to the reader. So if Chitra Banerjee has been successful in uh, narrating the story through her beautiful writing skills, then this book deserves all the fame. Now, this is that part of the book which I totally disliked and would never agree to. According to the author, Draupadi had secret feelings for Karna. Now, let me give you a little bit of backstory here. Draupadi was married to the five Pandavas. She had five husbands. So, these Pandavas were the sons of Kunti. Kunti also had another son uh, who was born to her before her marriage and this person is called Karna. So, Karna is not a sixth Pandava or anything like that. Karna is altogether a different character. There is a whole different story behind Karna's birth, which we will not get into uh, right now. So, because Karna was born to Kunti, uh, the, the author has tried to create a connect between Draupadi and Karna. And uh, she has tried to convince the readers saying that Draupadi had secret feelings for Karna throughout her life. This fake love story angle between Draupadi and Karna is one of the biggest trigger that provokes the readers to pick this book. When you add some masala to the story, uh, th there is high chances of getting popularity for the book, whether in the form of love or hatred. In either way, people will discuss about the book and it's a huge win-win situation for the author, right? If you are someone who do not have an idea about the story of Mahabharat, then you should never pick this book up 
because then you will probably get a wrong idea about the story if this is your first book related to Mahabharat. But if you are someone who already know the story of Mahabharat, then you can read this book and uh, get a new perspective from this story. I am not against any kind of creative freedom that authors take while writing these kind of retellings. In fact, uh, whenever authors retell the epic stories, they claim that it is a work of fiction. But I am not supportive of any kind of distortion of the story in the name of fiction. As I mentioned earlier, this is a beautifully written book. Apart from the Karna Draupadi drama, the author has also added some creative perspectives uh, for some other characters in the book as well. For example, Kunti is presented as a different kind of character in this book, which you will get to know when you read the book. And there are also certain instances in the story where Draupadi was not physically present. She has literally not seen those scenes, but uh, the author has, because she could not skip these uh, parts of the story, she cleverly narrated it in a way that Draupadi came to know about this from her spies or from her husbands uh, and uh, in ways like that. So this is something which I was really impressed and I really loved the way how she narrated these incidents and uh, this is what I count as creativity. But the love story angle was not something that I wanted to keep reading. Or at least I hoped that it will stop at some point, but no, she took it to some other level. And this is what made me cut stars for this book. So I read this, star I read this book 3 out of 5 stars. I hope you liked this video. Let me know in the comment section, do you believe that there was a secret relationship between Draupadi and Karna? If yes, let me know the authentic source from where you got that information. I would love to read that version as well. So see you in my next video. Till then, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye.